Volkspark Jungfernheide is located immediately south of Tegel Airport. It was laid out in a former royal hunting district along a main axis running from east to west and with an area of 146 hectares. It is the second largest landscape park in Berlin. The easiest way to get there is to take the subway U7 and get off at Jakob Kaiserplatz station and then walk five minutes to the north to the entrance of the park. Bus lines that stops at the Weltingebrücke just upside the entrance are 109 and M21. Bus line 123 stops at Jakob Kaiserplatz. On the meadows, including in front of the water tower built in 1927, you will not only meet rested Berliners, there are also athletes who have to stretch into every corner of Volkspark Jungfernheide after a run on the seemingly endless paths. The 38 meter high water tower was badly damaged in the Second World War, but the clinker brick building from 1927 was preserved with expressionist architecture that you can also admire elsewhere in Berlin. Restored in the 1980s, there used to be a restaurant in the base. In 2012, a cafe connected to the High Ropes course opened in it, which also serves pizza tongues on request. The Jung van Heide was named after the maidens of the Spandau nunnery. Until around 1800, an electoral or royal hunting ground was located here. From 1824 onwards, part of the Jungfernheide was used as a parade and shooting range. The city of Charlottenburg bought parts of the heath 80 years later in 1904 for the creation of a large urban park, but the plans were delayed further and further due to high costs. In 1920, the design of the Jungfernheide Park on 112 hectares began under the direction of the then garden director Erwin Bath. After the opening of the park in 1923, he also built the open-air theatre, taking the ancient theatre of Ephesus as a model. In his opinion, this amphi was the most suitable form to be able to accommodate a large number of spectators. The garden theatre has space for about 2,000 people. Theatre plays and folk dances were performed here. Sporting events were held, as well as riding exercises and boxing matches. The Ascension Day meeting in the Jungfernheide open-air stage has a long tradition. The park, as Erwin Barth had built it, only existed for a few years. Among other things, two houses at the entrance fell victim with the Second World War. Sculptures were melted down and destroyed. Today, the amphitheater is dilapidated and overgrown with bushes and trees. The beautiful hedges from the time the amphitheater was built are gone. When I was there on a Saturday afternoon early in November, the only spectator was a red fox that had found a nice spot with a good view. He didn't have a valid entrance ticket, so he just went away when I came to inspect. You will find the Amphitheater or Freilichttheater just behind the Kulturbeer garden, south of the dam. The Volkspark Jungfernheide itself, as well as individual buildings, were damaged in the Second World War. This Kulturbeer garden has a lovely backyard where you can chill out and enjoy a beer and maybe something to eat. One of the two beers in the main avenue, not far from the entrance on Kutschumacher Dam, had been missing since the end of the war. From an 11-ton shell limestone block, the sculptor Vincent Repnik created a replacement monument inaugurated in 2011. If you like sports, the park offers more than just walking and jogging. Stand-up paddling is also possible on the Jungfernheide Teich, or dam. The inner areas of the Fox Park offer plenty of opportunity to find a change from everyday life and to let off steam, play and picnic. For this purpose, large playgrounds and sun bathing lawns, a bathing area at the small lake, the outdoor pool and a popular forest high ropes course are available. To the southeast, at a height of up to 17 meters, beginners and experts shimmy from tree to tree in the forest high rope scores. I've been visiting this park many times with my bicycle and it's joined to watch children, youths as well as adults climbing around in the rich amount of ladders, nets and zip lines. It is especially crowded in the summer holidays but you will find a lot of people here at all times, spring, summer and autumn. On my last visit in November, it was still packed with children and youths climbing around in the canopy.
from viewing all the eager youths and children with smiling faces, I can imagine, that climbing around up in the nets, balancing on the lines and sliding along the zip lines must be fun. Maybe I should try myself someday. The security is well taken care of with safety harness and there are a lot of instructors helping those who seem to need a helping hand to overcome their anxiety. It must be a fun way to get to know yourself and train up your motor skills and ability to overcome fear. In the summertime you will find many sun seekers and bathing guests on the beaches of the dam, although a sign shows bathing is not allowed in the eastern end of the dam.
riding my bicycle on paths around the lake with lush green, dense forest areas covered with pines, beeches and oaks in a natural environment feels very relaxing and gives me pleasure and peace in mind. North of the Jungfernheide Pond is the tree nursery of the Charlotte Mug Wilmersdorf Garden Office. Young trees stand here in rows and rows. Out of line, the many colourful carved wooden figures dance in the tall grass. Squeaky green crocodiles, monkeys, bears, fairy tale characters, a man sized dinosaurs, and a lot of figures you just have to go there and see by yourself. Here you will find a memorial of the garden director and landscape architect Erwin Bath, who designed many parks in Charlottenburg in the 1920s. The Volkspark Jungfernheide is a garden monument and almost a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Unknown to many, the park is part of the original planning of the then independent city of Charlottenburg for this area. If these plans had been implemented, the Siemensstadt next door would certainly not exist and Charlottenburg Nord would also look completely different. But things turned out differently. An exciting study developed. According to the plans of the horticultural director Erwin Bath, construction began in October 1920. What has disappeared in the meantime? What did never happen? Was it only planned? Why was it built here at the time in nothingness? The park offers more interesting details and studies than you might think. The first construction work was carried out by unemployed people who had lost their jobs due to the war. Many of today's Volksparks in Berlin can also be traced back to such work measures. In this way, urgently needed recreational areas were created for the growing population.
after the tree nursery is also a large area with a sports stadium, football and tennis fields. Hidden between tall trees, the sun occasionally flashes onto the playground with forest flair. The goat and rabbit farm in the southwest also offers chickens, ducks and guinea pigs to marvel at.